There's been quite a lot of articles telling people that there are more and more women who are into video games and these articles are written with nothing but misinformation. So let's get into correcting them because some of these are pretty damn hot takes that would make you rolling in the floor laughing. Women led the rise of skill-based gaming. Okay, I shared this article on Twitter briefly just for one part of it. But before we get into that part, <laughs> let's get into the context of what this article is trying to say. In 1982, when game arcades were all the rage, a sociologist claimed that of every 100 arcade game players, 80% were men, while only 20% were women. In 2011, 51% of gamers were men, and 49% were women. And in 2014, an internet advertising bureau study revealed that 48% of gamers were men, while 52% were women. How times change. How times have changed indeed. Now here's what I want you to do. If you're not going to make a distinction between the mobile gaming market and the console or PC gaming market, that's perfectly fine. However, you cannot give the message that video games need to be more inclusive to both the mobile gaming market and the real gaming market. The one thing that you need to recognize is not the platforms that they play, but the type of games that men or women tend to play more. I've cited quite a few data and sources right down below on the type of games that men and women play. As you can see, they're very different. Another thing that is worth pointing out is that despite the demographics being 50-50 or close to it, as you say, there are less women who identify as gamers than men who identify as gamers. So if you're telling the game developers of, say, Call of Duty to be more and more inclusive to women, it would be about as successful as telling men to be more and more interested in Twilight. The key when we're trying to discuss this sort of topic is be specific. If you want gaming to be more welcoming to women, what type of games do you want to be more welcoming to women? In which area do you think gaming should have more women? Is it on the consumer side? Is it on the development side? Is it on the character designs or 3D modeling or voice acting, etc? Is it the programming, the backend, the debugging, the AI or any other programming sectors? What type of games do you want women to be more interested in? Do you want the mad street genre games to be more appealing to women? Do you want military shooters to be more appealing to women? Do you want sandbox games to be more appealing to women? That's my problem with most of these articles. They are never really specific. They always put a vague definition of gamers and vague definition of demographics and maybe sometimes vague definition to women. Speaking of Twilight, I just noticed something. Why is it only a problem when the demographic is dominated by men? There's never been a movement to dominate, say, the makeup tutorial video audiences with more men. I don't know about you, but I sense a little bit of bias here. The 2014 Gamergate scandal made this abundantly clear in a way that gave some women involved in the gaming industry, as well as observers, a huge amount of trauma. Anonymous posts online claimed that the attention of a female game developer was getting for a new product was not due to the quality of the product. It's quite interesting that you phrase the Gamergate event as traumatizing. A bunch of people say mean words to you on the internet because your game sucked and you considered it traumatizing? Maybe you shouldn't make video games that are garbage or learn how to take feedback from your customers or learn that the internet is just a horrendous place with horrendous people that you have absolutely no power to change. And if you're gonna talk about the trauma caused by Gamergate, so far Gamergate has one guy who went to jail because he beat up some cops and one guy who killed his dad because he accused him of being a Nazi. Even then, these two figures are not very well liked in Gamergate. You guys, on the other hand, the respecter of women and the advocate for women's rights, you guys turned out to be sexual abusers, sex offenders, actual misogynists, you name it. Just recently, anti-gamergator Juan Thompson is sentenced for five years in prison. It keeps happening with all of these male feminists, and I honestly don't know why. I have never seen gamergators commit these many crimes or be these hateful to women. And even if they are, well, at least they're a bunch of anonymous internet trolls and not people in a position of power like most of these male feminists. It snowballed from there and led to a torrent of abuse, hate mail, death threats, and more. As unpleasant as the experience was for so many people, some good came out of it. And once again, sisters are doing it for themselves and others. Oh wow, that's almost the same phrase that one of the articles that I did in our video on. That's another thing that this article loves on being vague about. If we're talking about Gamergate harassing women, they don't specify who? Is it Anita Sarkeesian? Anita is not a game developer, she's a critic, and she has tons and tons of things to criticize about, and I have a couple of videos on that. 
Sure, there are people who send her death threats and hate mails, but there has never been an actual time where she addressed the criticisms. In fact, one time where a user addressed her criticism, she just outright says, screw you, I was there and I was abused to shreds, please give me more victim bucks. Let's also not forget that time where Anita called Sargon a garbage person for simply being there at VidCon. If Anita wants to have a more inclusive space, a more welcoming space for women and everybody in the community, maybe she shouldn't contribute more into the toxicity. Just saying. Now if you're talking about Zoe Quinn, the thing about our friend Zoe there is that there are lots of things that she has done as well that not only deserves criticism but are quite despicable. Things that people like you either conveniently rub away or just ignore entirely. Both Zoe Quinn's past mistakes that are despicable and that time where Anita called out Sargon for being a garbage human, I have linked all of those videos in the description. Those videos also explain a lot of things about Gamergate that you might not know so check them out please. Not only are women gamers playing a significant role in tackling online bullying, they are also showing that they are a force to be reckoned with. The Internet Advertising Bureau study, along with few others, highlighted the fact that while women are definitely gaming, the industry was either ignorant of it or turned a blind eye to it. That's a recognition of a gender waves gap, perhaps? Women are definitely gaming. That's an incredibly strong claim. Just because you say that they are doesn't mean that they actually are because there are still many different areas in gaming that are dominated by men. And now we get into the best part. Here's the best part out of all of this that I highlighted on Twitter. I recommend you all to prepare your sides because this is easily one of the most hilarious thing that you will ever read in your life. Skill-based gaming is on the rise. No doubt to the exploding popularity of mobile gaming. <laughs> you serious? It is even creeping into casinos around the world, and usually because the industry is trying to attract younger players who think that slot machines and table games are boring or old fashioned. That's right, skill based gaming, whatever that means, is on the rise because of mobile gaming. Mobile gaming, you say? You mean those games where you can win by paying more and more cash? Heck, you're also alluding to casinos and slots, almost like you're trying to elude the pay-to-win systems of a lot of mobile games out there. I don't know that skill-based gaming is based entirely on how much we're willing to pay to win instead of actually based on skills. Even if millennials opt for skill-based gaming, we can't ignore a 2017 Quantic Foundry report based on 270,000 gamers' survey responses. 69% of women gamers prefer playing Match 3 and farming or family simulation games, compared to only 31% of male gamers. On the flip side, only 2% of the women gamers survey preferred playing sports genre games, compared to the 98% of male players for whom sports was their genre of choice. Oh great, now you're finally grasping the differences! Do you see that women have different interests in the types of games that they play? Do you see how the types of games that they play aren't usually the types of games that men play? Do you see why telling the game developers of Call of Duty to be more inclusive to women is a monstrously stupid idea? The majority of women gamers surveyed obviously have a preference for games that feature character development, communication, role-playing, and dynamic plots. For the boys, it's all about action, breaking stuff, blowing things up, and killing just about as anything that moves. Yes, and that still stays true for most men and women who are gamers. There are exceptions to the rule, but that's true in general, your point? However, before anyone starts thinking the old sugar, spice, and everything nice stuff is all true, let's not forget the 2013 Variety report that revealed 30% of women gamers play games with violent content, and more RPGs and action-adventure games also have a growing female audience. That is actually correct. There is a significant number of women who play MMOs, according to one of the reports by Quantic Foundry. You're doing a good job making the genre distinction article. Now what are you going to do with that information? Can you figure out that the reason why more and more women are getting into MMOs is because MMOs in general are getting more and more popular to everyone in general these days, and that a lot of women just want to know what's so fun about World of Warcraft? The gaming industry is slowly starting to take notice of girl gamers. While there are women who are still underrepresented in game design and development, and many new games are still packed with negative stereotypes and sexist imagery, a brief look at just about any mobile gaming app store reveals that women are not being forgotten. And a brief look at pretty much any other games and there are still more men than women. If you're going to up the demographics of mobile games, that's fine, but you're not going to change the demographics of first-person shooters anytime soon, and even so, what's the goal here? Why do you need more women in games? Why is it only a problem when it's a male-dominated area? What about the female-dominated areas, like fandoms? Do you think we need more men in there too? Even the online casino industry has taken note. Microgaming made waves when it released Castle Builder, an online slot that combines social and skill-based gaming with a traditional casino game. Changes coming to the industry slowly, yes, but it is coming.
This article has to be either trolling or the writer is just so completely out of touch with the gaming market. Micro gaming. The fact that this writer considers online slot machines as skill based is... <laughs> it's a pretty hot take. So why should the change be made? I have absolutely no idea. So let's consult another article. Gaming isn't a boys club anymore and brands need to catch up. Hey, game developers, make more and more games to be more interesting for women. Yes, I know that you're making a military shooter, but somehow make it so that women are interested in it. Somehow. Please. The gaming industry is still often missing the mark when it comes to reaching and engaging with women in impactful ways, says Untitled Worldwide CEO. Shows to me that CEO is a little bit out of touch with the common man. Here's a fun fact, women now make up 46% of all gamers, with teenage boys only accounting for 12% overall. It's more than safe to say that the depiction and narrow generalization of gamers as junk food addicted adolescent boys furiously shooting pixelated bad guys in their parents' basement is a tired cliche at best. So you're comparing women in all ages with only teenage boys. That sounds fair, and I know exactly where you get those claims from. You got it from the ESA report, and that ESA report is also misleading. I have no idea why would you compare all ages women to only teenage men, because gamers are average mostly above 30. If you compare adult men and adult women together, turns out that there are still more men who are gamers. Do you see the misleading reading of the statistics here? Yet brands and marketeers in the gaming industry are still often missing the mark when it comes reaching and engaging with the female demographic in impactful ways. I guess brand and marketeers understand their audiences a lot more than CEOs and journalists. Color me surprised. The roots of the only men can be real gamer stereotype can be traced Wrong. back. Wrong. The argument is only PC slash console gamers can be real gamers, regardless of gender, race, or ethnicity, etc. And even that argument is still up to debate. So not only you're giving misleading statistics, but you also don't give accurate arguments. This article is going to be fun. The roots of the only men can be real gamer stereotype can be traced back to the male-dominated origins of technology. It's pretty straightforward when you think about it. The tech industry has been, and in many ways still is, severely lacking in estrogen. And why does the tech industry need more estrogen? Because we hate men, obviously. I'm gonna have that reason hanging in my mind unless you state any other reason. Consequently, when tech advancements gave way to the birth of computer and console games in the 90s, the content and marketing clearly favored the male perspective. Basically, just like tech, gaming has always been a boys club, and the entire industry has persistently reinforced the message that ladies are not welcomed. Welcome to 2017, where gaming isn't the 80s and 90s anymore. And it's not that ladies are not welcome, it's just that games are specifically geared for boys. By that logic, Barbie dolls are not welcome for boys. They are. You can grab a Barbie doll or any other dolls and play them, even back in the 80s or 90s. Same thing goes with video games. Nothing is stopping women to grab a video game and play them. There are quite a significant number of women who play video games back in the 80s and 90s, and they tell everyone who says that games are only for boys to go screw themselves. These women show more display of testosterone than any of you better writers combined. Hell, I was into Barbie when I was a little boy. She's freaking hot, don't blame me. Even in games where female characters were present, they were often hypersexualized tokens, aka the Smurfette principle, or depicted as weak damsel in distresses, waiting eagerly to be rescued by men. Yeah, we're not living in the 80s or 90s anymore. The writer is fine stereotyping gamers and the actual hobby relentlessly, but women? Nah, don't stereotype women, that's just evil. In the most extreme cases, games like Grand Theft Auto or controversies like Gamergate, women weren't just left out of the equation, but treated with outright hostility, violence, and harassment. We have already talked about Gamergate. As for GTA, I'm going to use this comic to illustrate what's going on accurately. GTA is a game that makes fun of everyone, but it's only a problem when women got hit by the joke. It's like complaining that women are the victims of a nuclear bombing. To make matters worse, the majority of console and computer games were designed for those who can devote incredulous amount of hours playing them, further shutting down busy women with families and daily obligations to fulfill. Oh really? So console games and PC games require lots and lots of hour? It's almost like there's a certain number of sacrifice that is required in order to become a gamer, like money, time, dedication, passion, and lumping the people who have those things with the people who clearly don't are going to not only piss them off, but also spread misinformation to the public. Thankfully, I'm here and I'm not letting you get away with that easily even if the cocks are banging out in the background. 
And then came the advent of mobile games. As new genre of games flooded app stores, independent of the established players in the industry, more diverse, multi-dimensional, high-quality stories and experiences opened up the culture to broader audiences. By design, many of these new games were meant to be played more casually, taking the culture out of the dark basement and into a woman's daily commute, work breaks, and living rooms. Ah, yes, mobile games. More legitimate than actual games because instead of spending hours and hours of playing video games inside, you play thousands of hours playing video games outside. See, we're no longer basement dwelling nerds. We actually go outside and have a real job. I genuinely want to ask these journalists, if half of women are gamers and gamers are basement dwelling nerds, are you saying that a large portion of these women are basement dwelling nerds? That's a very nice worldview of women you have there, Ryder. It's now been over a decade since mobile games took off, and all signs point out to a seismic shift in its demography, skewing more and more to females. But old habits die hard, and despite the mounting evidence, the marketing still hasn't caught with the times yet. Maybe because marketeers know their stuff a lot more than out-of-touch journalists. Maybe because gamers who spend a lot of their time on video games like me also know more of their stuff than out-of-touch journalists. More times than not, we see a big disconnect between how most gamers view and talk to women and how gamers actually see themselves. This is particularly evident in hidden object games that heavily skew towards middle-aged women. Here, marketing often portrays its players as bored housewives with nothing better to do, rather than tapping into this group's cleverness and desire for empowerment and frill. A huge missed opportunity. So what you're saying is the marketing department is doing a good job. Seriously, hidden object games? Do they still make them in this current year? Who still play these games anyway, your mom? Today, games that empower women have a huge opportunity to connect with the female demographic and fulfill their desires to take charge and take on roles of the driver, the heroine, and the problem solver. Jeez, this article just refused to be specific. What type of games that empower women? What kind of huge opportunity that you're referring to? Why are these arguments so bad? Video games are a $91 billion industry, with mobile gaming accounting for $41 billion of the total, according to a 2016 analysis by Superdata Research. Considering this along the fact that 75% of female gamers play on mobile, refusal to evolve past old conventions of gaming essentially means willingly leaving loads of money on the table. Look, if women play more and more games in mobile, good for them. Let them play. Just don't ever, ever conflate them with people who play shooters or RPGs or any other single-player games in consoles or PC. You don't market old pulp novels into the Twilight demographic. At the end of the day, both men and women gamers just want great stories that they can relate to. Just like men, women yearn to feel badass and reap the glory. They just haven't been given many opportunities to live that experience in games. As more women make gaming, both mobile and otherwise a part of their lives, developers and marketeers who cater to them with thoughtful, welcoming stories that respect their intelligence will be rewarded. Here's an interesting fact about women. They can feel badass and reap the glory by being sexy and dominant, which a lot of video games have provided opportunities in them being sexy and dominant. But you respecters of women cannot comprehend for one second that women can be sexy while still have death and character. In other words, you guys are the real misogynists here, adding up to the fact that you guys also treat men like garbage. So in conclusion, these articles about video game demographics are made by out-of-touch journalists who desperately want to prove a certain narrative by purposefully misinterpreting data and being dishonest in general. Come on guys, this is getting tiresome. At least the last article has the balls to say that mobile gaming is skill-based. That's probably one of the hottest takes of 2017. Tune in the next video for more hot takes in gaming demographic because my god, there are tons of them just for the past couple of days.